Enocalc 3D has the ability to perform reinforced concrete beam design, and we'll use this simple single story, single bay model, specifically this beam in the background, to demonstrate. A prerequisite to using the concrete design tab is that we have to have current analysis results, and right now we can see that we do not. In order to get analysis results, we know that all members in the model have to have sections, they have to have materials, supports have to be assigned, and we can see in this view of the model that we do have uh, those things assigned. And then before we can perform the analysis, we also have to have loads assigned. So I've assigned a uniform dead load, a uniform live load, and I've applied a lateral point load that will affect the beam that we're focusing on. So we should see some interesting design results there. Having met all of those requirements, we can now move into focusing on load combinations. So I'll come to the Create tab and over to Load Combinations. And here I can show that I've generated a whole list of ACI load combos. It's important to make sure that those load combos are set to run in order so that they, uh, so that they can have an effect on the analysis and uh, they are set to run. The other thing is we know because it's concrete design that we want that to be a P-delta analysis. So notice that they're all set to yes in the P-delta column. And then finally, because we know we're gonna be using concrete design, we wanna make sure that all those load combinations are set to yes in the concrete design column. So we're looking good there. No work to be done on that tab. The only thing that I have to do at this point is refresh the analysis results. So I'll come to analysis, static analysis. And in a couple of seconds, we'll see that the analysis is complete and that the model is now solved. So now I can come over to the concrete design tab and I'll just start working my way from left to right. The first button that we see is the RC Materials button. This opens up a materials table. The one that we're interested in here is obviously the concrete material. And notice that this is a little different than materials tables in other sections of Enercalc 3D because these aren't stiffness materials like Young's Modulus or Unit Weight and so on. Instead, these are strength properties. So this is the strength of concrete, the strength of the primary steel, and the strength of the uh, shear stirrups that we want to have considered. So I've already applied that material and I don't need to apply with this, but just to show that if I come up and select um, member material and say, okay, I can show that it's been assigned the concrete uh, 3KSI material. Okay. Um, the next button is RC model design criteria. These are criteria that apply to the entire model. It starts with the desired design code. And then the squint test shows that we have a big section here that's dedicated to column design parameters that won't affect us for the purpose of beam design. And likewise, this small section down here related to slab and plate design parameters also doesn't affect us. So this whole screen just boils down to one option for beams, and that is, do I want to automatically compute support widths? I've selected the option to do that, and that has the effect of making sure that flexural design starts at the faces of the supports, and that shear design starts at a distance D from the face of the supports. So this is a, a global or a model criteria. It doesn't need to be applied to anything in particular. I can just say, okay. The next button is RC Design Criteria, and when I click that, I can see that I have options for beams, columns, and plates. So I'll come into the Beam option, and here we can see that this is where we specify the size and number of stirrup legs to consider for shear design, as well as the bottom and top clear cover to consider for the longitudinal steel. Notice that we can create as many of these criteria as we want if we have different conditions. Since I only have the one beam that I want to design, it only took one line of design criteria and that's already been assigned. So no work to do on 
RC beam design criteria. The next button is Exclude Concrete Elements. This is a convenience tool that lets us include or exclude elements for the purpose of the concrete design. I've previously set things so that everything except for the highlighted beam is already excluded. And notice that it allows you to act on members or shells, and it allows you to do the easiest process, either include or exclude. So the selected beam is included already. We'll see results for that in a minute. The next button is cracking factors. Cracking factors range from 0 to 1, and this dialog gives us a quick reference to ACI to remind us of common values suggested by ACI. I've already applied a cracking factor of 0.35 to this beam, which we'll see on the screen in a minute. So there's nothing to do with cracking factors at this point. I'll click cancel. Next is RC design properties. Again, we see options for beam, column, and plate, so we'll focus on beam. This dialog just allows us to assign criteria, the inclusion or exclusion status, and a cracking factor to multiple entities all at one time. Don't need to do any work on this one, so I'll just click cancel here. And then I'll come to RC member input. This opens up a nice table so that we can see all of the members in the model, whether they're beams or columns, which design criteria is assigned to them, the cracking factor that's assigned, the inclusion or exclusion status, and we can change all of these in this table as well. So I don't need to change anything because everything is the way that I would want it. I'll just click cancel. Notice that the neighbor button is RC plate input. We're focusing on beams, so we don't need to look at plate input for this model, but it's there if you're working on plates. And now we're ready to perform the concrete design. So with all that set up, it takes just a fraction of a second for it to get through the design of that one beam. And now we can see that the design is finished and we can click close. From here on out, we're now just looking at output uh, analysis and design results. So I'll come to concrete design output. One thing that we might want to look at is the analysis envelope. So here, for each member that's been designed, and for many increments along the member, we can look at the maximum and minimum major axis moment, the absolute value of the major direction shear, and we can see the load combinations that are responsible for producing each of those three uh, critical values. One thing to note in this screen is that there is a load combination dropdown, but it does not change the values that you see. Instead, it's provided here to help decode what these numbers mean. So for instance, if we wanted more syntax for what combination number 19 means, we can select it and get some sort of a code reference uh, to decode what's controlling that particular condition. So that's RC analysis envelope. Back to concrete design output and then RC beam results. Here for each of the designed beams, we can see at increments along the length of the member, material properties, the design moment that was considered for the bottom and the required area of steel to address that moment, and then the design moment considered for the top steel and the required steel to address that moment. We'll close out of that. And there's one more that's of interest for beams, and that's member shear results. So here we can see, again, for each beam that's designed, from many slices along the length of the beam, material properties, the specified stirrup size, and the number of legs that were specified to be effective, and then the design shear, the design axial load, and then we have uh, the spacing of the ties and the calculated value of PVC, 
and the combination that's responsible for controlling that uh, spacing or that design. The rest of the concrete design output doesn't have anything to do with beams. And flexural interaction doesn't have anything to do with beams either. So we can skip over that one and go directly to concrete design diagrams. Here we have an option for member envelope or plate. We'll use the member envelope diagram. And here we have a few choices. We can look at the member moment envelope or shear envelope. And we can look at the required flexural reinforcement or shear reinforcement. So we'll just pop each of these open quickly. One thing to point out on this screen is that the diagram mode has the method of clearing the diagram, and that's called erase existing diagrams. So if you struggle to find out how to get the diagram to view or display, choose the diagram mode that you want up here, either all members or selected members and then say, OK. So that's a look at our concrete member moment envelope. And then we can look at the shear envelope. And then we can see flexural reinforcement requirements. And last, we can see shear reinforcement requirements see a better view of this in a minute on a report. And then again, to clarify the view, to remove those diagrams, you can come back and say, erase the diagrams, and then say OK. Concrete design tools, I'll pull this one down uh, so that we can see what's in here. It's not used in the normal workflow of the internal reinforced concrete beam design routine, but it offers some utilities like a rebar database, a K factor calculator, and then a quick utility like a spreadsheet for uh, rectangular sections and for T sections. So it's good to know that it's there. The last icon that we have on the concrete design tab is the unity check. And when I click this, it will color code all of the designed concrete members. Blue indicates that a passing design was able to be found. And if for some reason something couldn't be solved or couldn't be designed, it would appear as red. So the last thing that we want to look at is reporting. And if we come to the reporting tab and then look at print reinforced concrete design report, we'll get the option to view things for beams, columns, and beams and columns. In this case, I've selected just those things that apply to beams. So that's the flexural design info and the shear design info. And I'm only asking for info for the selected element. And then I'll say, OK. This is a preview of the report that we can print for this one beam. Page one includes a concrete design moment envelope and a diagram like we saw earlier the required flexural reinforcement. One thing that I would point out on these diagrams that's important to understand for interpretation is that the distance scale on the horizontal is specified as a percentage of the length. And that's useful because remember that we asked for the designs to consider the support widths. So that means that for flexural design, we should be seeing designs with a reference point that starts at the face of one support and goes to the face of another. And for shear, we should be seeing things that run from uh, D from the face of the support over to D away from the face of the far support. So be sure to interpret this distance scale correctly. Speaking of shear info, if I go to the next page, we can see concrete design shear envelope. And then here is a better scaled view of that required stirrup spacing diagram.